Yo, folks, I got a real treat for you, especially if you like making money. Jason Griggs in the house. Brad, what's up, man? Dude, what's going down? I'm pumped to be here, man. Well, Big fan of you and this podcast. This is kind of surreal for me. Well, I'm pumped to have you only because, as you know, I like to bring people value. Yes, sir. If for the people not paying attention, they don't know who this is. It's Jay Griggs Real Estate on IG. Yes, sir. Jay Griggs Real Estate. And then Jason Griggs everywhere else. Yep. G-R-I-G-G-S. Dude, he's a real estate agent, coach, investor, Airbnb expert, entrepreneur, all around, uh, you know, badass. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now you're out of New York. Yep. But you live here now. I live here. You live in Vegas. Best decision I ever made. Well, compared to New York, I would agree. <laughs> um, but not compared to anywhere you could have moved. I love Vegas. I love why? How old are you? I'm 35. Oh, that's probably why. You married? I'm married with a kid. Oh, well, then why do you love Vegas? Everything about it, man. There's just so much opportunity and action here. I don't know. I, I, I like Vegas. My wife's trying to urge me to move to Nashville, but. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm like, dude, I kind of like Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> And I got a bunch of kids. So like it, Vegas is cool. I got to admit it gets a little hot. That's what I don't like. Okay. Like when it gets one fifteen, come on. But there's no snow. I know, but come on one fifteen, <laughs> And there is snow. There's been snow here several times. <laughs> not real snow. It's just not, it's just not normal, but it gets cold as shit in the winter. How long you been here? I've been here almost 12 years. Okay. So, you know, it gets cold in the winter. Yes, it does. Notice how I said winter. <laughs> Says you're from New York, Long yeah. Island. Long how can we? How can we don't sound like I have an accent? I guess it's gone. I've, how do you say winter? Winter. See, you, you wouldn't say that from, <laughs> from there. You'd say winter. Winter. Yeah, like I was out there all winter. <laughs> so, so the long story short, dude, you were out in New York. You eventually decided to come out here because you came out here for a party or something. Yeah, what I happened? Came, I was visiting a buddy of mine who's going to UNLV. And it just clicked. I was like, I was addicted to this city. You were, were you married then? No. Exactly. I was 21, 22 yeah. at the time. Dude, that's crazy. I moved here about the same age. And what's funny is the guy who got me to visit, because I visited, I wasn't planning on moving here. I lost all my money the first day and had to stay. <laughs> yep. So I got a job to get enough money to get back home and then started meeting people. Stayed. That that's, was 91. That, How old were you? I was born, born in 87. Okay, so you were so three, yeah, four. three or four. You were four years old when I did exactly what you did at 21. Yep, 21. And dude, I did the same thing. It was like, this is a cool little town. And it wasn't as cool as it is now, but it was cool. It, it just clicked for me instantly. You, you saw opportunity. I saw opportunity. And not in the Airbnb business. No, I was a teacher. What kind of teacher? I was an elementary physical education teacher. I was a gym teacher. Your PE teacher. PE teacher. That's, that's why I moved here. That's nuts, dude. Yeah. So you weren't making shit. Nope. Twenty seven thousand. Why would you decide job. to be a PE teacher? Both my parents were teachers. I mean, I got to be thankful for teachers. They they don't get enough credit. No, it's the it's, good ones, I should say. Because, dude, there's some teachers that should never have got the job. I agree with that. And then there's teachers out there that literally should be put in jail. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, both my parents were teachers. So. I know, but they're teaching some stupid shit right now. I agree. And it's like I when when you hear the they and all the conspiracies, and you're like, dude, come on, like it's starting to get more and more believable with the with the books I'm seeing that they're having these little third graders read, second graders. I'm like, why would you be? <laughs> why would you be having them read that? I agree with you. It's crazy, but anyway. So you were a teacher. So I was a teacher. Both my parents were teachers, and growing up, that was like tattooed into my brain you're going to be a teacher you're going to get summers off and i thought that's what i wanted to do and i See, when you said off that sounded a little <laughs> you got summers so, off so summers off and then i quickly realized that teaching wasn't for me what and grade were you teaching kindergarten through seventh eighth grade so you're just babysitting babysitting in so, a in a really bad part of town yeah so so you decided Screw that. Screw that. I'm going to do what? So I love coaching. So I coach lacrosse here in town and I met a lacrosse program and I eventually took over that program and started a company with that. And through the network. So hold on. So you basically 
quit your job in New York or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Moved out here because you saw opportunity. And when you got here, you were a lacrosse teacher. Yep. I was, I was teaching and coaching at night. So let me ask you, did you move out here just because it was cool or because you saw opportunity? Both. And and to have some fun. How did you know that lacrosse teaching was something you could do? I had no idea. I I had no idea. How did that happen? I just emailed the league uh, and said, I I coach lacrosse. I played it. I played it in college and they were like, we need coaches here. And they hooked me up with uh, a program in Henderson and I met all these different people in the wall in Henderson in Anthem. And as the years went on, the parents would help me. They would get me a job. They would give me opportunities to do things. And I just kept going up the ladder and that's how I got into real estate. So the one day, how long ago did you get into real estate? Seven years ago. So the one day come along and you weren't making any money. Zero. And so someone said something about real estate. What was it about the real estate that? So I wanted to buy my own house because I really liked Henderson. And so I, I ended up buying my own house. And then another lacrosse parent was convinced me. She was like, you should go work at Excess Nightclub to make some extra money at night. And I was like, I don't know. You hear about the nightclub stuff, the industry. And then I started making some really good money. You were married? I wasn't married yet. Okay. Okay. So I started making all this money. Now, to me, it was a lot of money because I'm a teacher making 20000 jumping into this nightclub job. And I just started saving it. And I saved all the money and I just started investing it in real estate. And I bought my first house. And then one, another lacrosse parent was like, you should get into real estate. And he gave me an opportunity to become an agent. And it just kind of free, it just snowballed into the yeah, real estate career. agents. Not what makes you rich. Correct. So after I bought my first house, I was like, this process isn't that bad. And this is still when Henderson and Vegas, it didn't explode, explode yet. And so I bought my first house and then I started buying my first rental property. And that's when it, the light bulb clicked. I was like, I'm going to screw being an agent. There's no money in being an agent. The real money's in owning real estate. And so that clicked me very early. That's what people need to pay attention to. I say that all the time. Like realtors, real estate agents right now, either get into owning it or come work for me in the financial services space. I think being a realtor is the dumbest profession in the world. Here's why. Well, there's a lot of them that listen to this show, so you just made half of them angry. Okay, so here we go. Being a realtor, you have access to the to the the inside information of the market and how to do things. Supposedly, supposedly. So, but as a good one, a good one. And so, why would a realtor or somebody like myself take that information and not use it myself? And that's something I did right away. I saw opportunities. Well, that's what I, that's that, that's funny. You say that because I used to ask realtors when they wanted me to buy a house. I'd always say, "Well, if it's such a good deal, why don't you buy it?" Yep. Yeah. And they go, Ugh. and I'm like, <laughs> "See, that don't make no sense, dude. Why you 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 really think I should buy it? It's such a good deal, but yet you're not buying it." Yeah, I get a lot of business because people see that I. You, you can't just walk, you talk the talk. You got to walk the walk too. And so when they see that I walk the walk, they're like, wow, he owns properties too. He does this. I, that's why my business is successful. So so you started doing it and then you started making a little coin? You started making some money, yeah, and saving it. And then you, what were you doing, flips? What were you doing? I just started buying rental properties. I know, so, but so you, you buy them nice and just rent them? Yep, or that's you, exactly you what I flip did. Them? So what I would do is I would save up my money from the nightclub because when you transition into real estate, you need another income. Right. Because you will fail if you just do real estate because it takes about two years to really get up and going. And so I would save up twenty five thousand bucks and I would find an investor or a partner. We would buy a rental property and then I would save up again and keep doing it. And I never stopped doing it. I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And as the years went on, I just I never sold them. You own them all still? I own them all still. See, they're well, I'd hold on to them now. Yeah. But, you know, they they just keep doubling. They keep doubling, tripling, and my strategy is a little different. I like to buy them down. I pay off the mortgage as fast as possible. Why? Just it's just a safety net. Once you once the houses are paid off, they can if the market crashes tomorrow, they'll never get them. Yeah, I see. But still, it depends on the interest rates. True. Mine, I bought them so long ago that my interest rates are like in the two, like the two, three, and they're, they're pennies on the dollar from what 
they are now. So then I would imagine you realized Airbnb short-term rentals were even more profitable. Yes, sir. Than a monthly rent. Deal. Yeah. So the Airbnb short, the, the correct term is short-term rentals. Their long-term rentals just on steroids. They're just a different well, I mean, animal. If you can rent a house out, like say four weekends for five grand, or you can rent the house out for the month for 10 grand. Why wouldn't you just yeah. do that? Cause <laughs> I, then you also right. have the house. If I know most Airbnbs aren't palatial mansions, but if I owned a big ass mansion, I'd Airbnb that bitch out. Well, that's, we'll get to that, but that's, that's essentially what I did. What? I just, I started doing my short term rentals and people were asking me, Jason, do you have a bigger one? Do you have a bigger one? Do you have a bigger one? And I was like, no, I don't. So I decided I needed to buy the biggest one in Las Vegas and build out. Which one is that? It's a 9,200 9, square foot mansion in Henderson. It's called San Gabriel. Well, that's not the biggest. It's the biggest legal Airbnb. Oh, legal. Yep. Because you need a license on these things to do them right. So I do them right. There's how a lot how of, much do you get a night for that? Around 4000 a night. A night? A night. And how many does it sleep? It sleeps 16. See, now that's really only... 200 bucks each maybe yeah it's better than going to a hotel yeah so that was the house. idea behind behind the short-term rentals was i wanted to build the best portfolio of the nicest short-term rentals in the city and that's what you're doing now that's what i'm doing now and that's what you help me with i know but so so for the people listening like you didn't start with any money you saved up 25 grand though so is that what listeners would have to do is like hey let's be real you're gonna have to have 20 30 40 grand saved up no what i would suggest is you need to use your network and what i did was i would take my i would go find the deals and i would partner with people who had money and so how would you find them though through friends facebook just people I knew. I'm from New York, so but there's a lot of people out there that'll say, "Dude, none of my friends have money." Well, then you you don't have the right friends. That's a fact. You need to start making more friends. So where I'm from in New York, it's very expensive. And at the time when I moved here, Vegas was pennies on the dollar. Still is kind of it. It is the taxes, especially are. compared to New York. Exactly. So people were like, "Yeah, I, I could buy a condo for fifty grand. Let's go. Let's do it." And it would rent for a thousand, twelve hundred. So, what are the rules to the to the Airbnb thing? So, it's a big topic right now. So, the city of Henderson has their own set rules and laws. Okay, and then now the city of Clark County and Las Vegas they're opening up their rules. Are people so, doing it regardless? Yes. There's thirteen thousand Airbnbs in Henderson, Las Vegas, and there's only three hundred and forty with licenses on them. And I have eight of them, <laughs> eight of those 340. So, so most people aren't doing it by the book. Correct. What happens if you're a neighbor and you see someone Airbnb and out of a house that, that's not supposed to be Airbnb out? You could, there's a hotline, you could rat them out and people do. And happens then what happens? You get a fine, you get a warning and then a fine and then a big fine. The owner of the home? The owner of the home. And so then they what, could put a lien on your house. So you basically, when they tell you to stop, you better stop. You better stop. Yeah, you're screwed because then they now what do you do? Right. Do you sell the house? Well, that's the thing. That's the big risk of people who do them illegally. Yeah, but what do you do? Sell the house or keep it? You could long term rent it, or you could sell the house. And I've had many friends that sell got it screwed. to me. Yeah. Anybody out there in that situation, hit me up. <laughs> I'm always looking for real estate deals now. Let's go, the, dude. There's I'm gonna, gonna be a lot of them coming up. Well. That's what I'm waiting on. People ask me, what am I doing right now? I'm like, I'm stacking chips. The same, same here. Because I'm telling you, in about six months to a year, there's going to be some good deals yes, out sir. there. Yes, sir. You and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to all come back anyway. Yeah. Like it, real estate never stays down. No, it's the long-term game, but that's the problem people have. Everybody wants it right now. Everybody well, wants the big cash. Everybody quick. wants to buy right when it goes up and sell right when it, before it goes down. <laughs> Number no, 2008. I was not. I moved here in 2011. Well, dude, I was here in, in 08, and I was renting this house way out there. I'd say like North Las Vegas, Centennial, okay. you know where that is? Yeah. Um, not in North Las Vegas, but north Northern Las Vegas. And uh, I forget what the rent was. It wasn't very expensive, but the house was like, let's say, 145K. This was in you know, oh wait, pretty decent little house track home type thing. Had a cool backyard with a cool pool built in. Whoever owned it, like 
you know, it was a nice house. So I asked them if they would sell it. And they're like, yeah, we'd sell it. And I said, how much? They said like, you know, 165,000. And I'm like, 165,000 is only worth 135,000. That's stupid. <laughs> so I, I said, no, I'll just keep renting it. And I'm renting it from them. So then I run into them again one time and I said, you know, you might want to just sell me the house. They said, yeah, we'll, we'll sell it to you. I said, how much? They said they want 215 for it. I said, 215, are you out your mind? I got all pissed off. Are you nuts? Well, little did I know, but the real estate was starting to do this. Mm -hmm. And I told him, screw yourself again. Then I went back and said, okay, fine. I'll give you the 215. Guess what they said? 435 Ooh. now dude this house was not worth 435 but that's what it was selling for i said go pound sand i ain't doing it never did buy the house but that house eventually was worth 135,000 again right but for a minute there dude whoever owned it was going up right well that's the tough part that people don't understand you're never going to time the market correctly like but, but now the house is back up again, which right. is my point. So That's, you just got to hold that bitch. It's a hold. It's a long hold. What if game. you can't afford the mortgage? Then you're screwed. How come you can't just rent it? There's so many people that will rent a house. There's a huge shortage of rentals. Here That's why Vegas. when people are like losing their houses to the bank, I never get it. Like, why don't you just rent the bitch out and let the rent pay the mortgage? Yep. Well, there's a reason why I like my, Matter less. of fact, if anyone's losing their homes, I want you to hit me up in your DM. Me, I, I me might, too. I might help you yeah. out. <laughs> I, I thought your episode with Pace is amazing. That guy's a monster. Dude, Pace is amazing. He, he that, that, that dude got some creative deals. Yes. He don't really care. He'll f figure out a way to do business. Yep, that's that's what I do too now. Well, I'm that's what I'm going to start doing. Yes, it's the best. Now, I'm not uh, just here in Vegas. I got a little spot down in Nashville. So how do we find the greatest areas? Like, is Vegas a good area? I think for investors, I think it's a great area. Because if you're going to rent houses... The people, as we both know, the people in this town are not very smart with their money. And so you get, you have a lot of renters in this town. And well, so is the rental market going up right now or down? It's going up. It's not, it, it's, it hasn't been affected yet. Well, I remember when, uh, you know, COVID and the houses were like, you couldn't get them and everybody was just being stupid. You couldn't rent anything either. I didn't have a problem during COVID with Renting? my rentals. Nope. But the, what I, do you mean? Didn't with have a my problem long-term rentals. Just it, it, people not paying. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you couldn't find any place to rent. Yeah, right. There was none available. And not only that, if it was and you let someone in, they might not pay. Right. My rental business is, is very easy. Dude, I paid, like this place is about 80000 a month. I paid it all the way through COVID. Right. And you could have been a jerk about it. There, there was people that said, I ain't paying rent because this and that. And I'm like, dude, look, I got the money. I'm paying the bills. Yep. And I kept paying the bills. It, ne it never even blipped for me. That's how my tenants were. They paid me. I didn't and have according no problem. To, according to Cardone, because he said he had about 96% people pay. Yeah. Because so, people had money and they were getting money from the government. So Yeah, but you, now that's all over, that's dude. Over Interest now. rates are up. Inventory's growing. If you have a bunch of inventory, dude, it's the buyer's market. Yes, sir. That's and then, where, and then pretty soon the inventory goes away, and then it's the seller's market. Well, that's where we're going, and that's where investors like us we're going to be able to take some good opportunities. Well, I'm 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 down. Let's go. Matter of fact, anybody listening, you got real estate deals, dude. Hit me in the DM. Let's figure <laughs> out how to do some biz. Let's do it now, old Jason Griggs. You're you're teaching people now. Yeah. How to do this? Yes, sir. Airbnb specifically? Airbnb, how to do it. The short-term rental, long-term rental. So if someone's listening to this and they're like, dude, I got a couple thousand bucks. How, how am I supposed to do this with a couple thousand bucks? So what I recommend is partnering with people. And so I partner with my students now all the time. But do you and teach them how to do it? I teach them how to do it. That's, that's the Griggs University. That's the Griggs University we came up with. Yeah, right here. That's right. Game changer. Is it done? It's done. When's Selling. it launch? It launched. It's launched. It's launched. Folks, you can go get a course right now. Now, does that course include weekly calls? Calls that includes everything that you taught me how to do. Yes, weekly calls. We're doing Zooms. We're doing uh, FaceTime property walkthroughs. So if you have one in Texas, I'll be able to show you how to set up the house virtually. Now, what can someone make doing this? They can make a lot of money, a lot of money. But the goal with doing Airbnbs and short-term rentals is you want to pay off this mortgage. That's that's the main goal. You have a mortgage of 3000 a month. You want to produce income to get that paid off 
and then create income on top of that. Where I see people fail is they take that income and they go spend it and they think they could live off that lifestyle. But these houses are a business. Each property is a business. Well, you, dude, you got to cover your nut. Yeah. But like, so, let's say I'm charging a thousand bucks a night for an Airbnb. Mm-hmm. What, like, what's the rent on a, like a normal monthly mortgage on a house it's like be that? It's going to significantly less than like what you're what, going to But in. what, for, what's the formula? Like 10 times less? No, like in so, other words, if I, if I go get an Airbnb that's charging me two grand a night, what, how do I know what that thing is worth? So I, we do it a different way. So what we'll do is we'll buy, we'll just use a simple one that I did. I bought one for 800,000 and the monthly rent on it would be around 6,000, but we bring in around 30,000 a month on it. And so you need to track the formula of what, where's it located? Air DNA. Or you could just do a simple and just go on Airbnb. What's Air DNA? Air DNA is a comping system for Airbnbs across the country. Comping? Comping meaning uh, comparables of what they will rent for. Oh, so so you buy the house and then you see from Air DNA what the rent should be. Yes. You don't just make up your you own number. Don't. Right. What if you do? I've done it. And it's a uh, it's like throwing a dart at people the, just don't rent. People will not they won't rent your place. But wow. the strategy is this: you want to start slow, and so you want to start low and slow. So you want you want to buy the shit balls? No, you want to you want to attract people to your new. I call it a hotel. Isn't it location, location, location? Yes, it is. So my one of my best ones is right by the M. So it's near the strip, and it has a killer backyard. And yeah, but nothing's real by the M. But it's near the strip. It's closer to the strip, and so we built out a killer backyard, and it's it's really nice. And so we were like, all right, let's try and shoot for 700 a night. And then it booked out so fast. It booked out like 300 days. And we were like, we priced it too low. It booked out 300 days? 300 days. Do you get paid up front for all those days? No. When did you get your money? Once they finish their stay. Oh, who's holding it until then? Airbnb. See, dude, that's how they're making the dough. Yes, sir. They have, they're marketing. To, like Everyone calls it an Airbnb, but it's not an Airbnb. It's a short-term rental. But the marketing that they do, it just thinks everybody makes you think. Yeah, that well, if you go to Airbnb to find it, it is an Airbnb, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. But, but, it the, but the correct term is short-term rental. You're buying a real yeah, estate Yeah, but where property. do you find short-term rentals other than Airbnb? So VRBO has a site, Vacate Furnish Finder. But those aren't popular. Everyone goes to Airbnb. Now, if I wanted to go to pretty much any city in the country, there's an Airbnb there. Everywhere. So if That's- I say I want to go to Kalispell, Montana... They're there. Crazy. They're there. So now the game for me Are is... Are there where you can just rent the room? Yeah. See, that's the weird ones. Yeah. I ain't renting nobody's room. I think it's a good thing, though. It's called house hacking. So Not if you me. buy a new house and you don't want to use it for... Dude, I ain't doing weekends. it. No? No, too many whack jobs. Even if you're not there? It's just, dude, someone's got to come see it. You don't even know who's coming to look. That's true. Like, fuck you. You ain't coming in my house. You got to. And I ain't renting a room in yours. I might not wake up. Okay. (laughs) I I, I will rent the house, but I will not rent a room in the house. Like, pass. I guess it's all. And uh, I ain't renting you a room of mine either. (laughs) So I don't know you. You ain't in my house. (laughs) Now, that's my biggest thing with me. I know, like, I think, okay, I'll go buy a lake house because I've been wanting a lake house. And I'm looking for a lake house, by the way, if anyone knows of a kick-ass deal on a lake house somewhere. But it has to be a killer lake. You know, I'm particular. But I thought, let me go buy a lake house. I don't want to be there year-round. I just want to be there, like, yeah. during the summer. So will it rent during the winter? Yes. Yeah, like, Big Bear's popular, right? Because they do. But if, it, if it'll rent stuff. during the winter, how come someone doesn't buy a lake house so they have a lake house paid for for three months out of the summertime and then Airbnb the bitch the other nine months? People don't know how to do this business, but that's the best part about it. Is that how you hard can, is it? You buy the fucking house and you <laughs> register it on Airbnb. Well, it's it. There's a lot that goes into it. Things break. You got to. Well, that's called business. maintenance, dude. Yeah, but it's not it's not as easy as you think. You got it's a maintenance company. We do. Yeah, we we started one. Yeah, so I mean, I could call you and say, dude, yeah. here's a house. How much yeah. to maintain it? It's just like a multifamily unit, right? Yeah, it is. I think the best part about this business is that you can use your own properties. What about deposits and shit? Like, what if I screwed up your plumbing? Well, I'll give you a funny story. I had an agent say, hey, we have this big NBA player who wants to rent your big mansion. 
I said, cool. I said, who is it? We can't disclose who it is. Uh, I trusted the guy. I said, all right. We didn't take a deposit. And the guy ended up throwing a little party, a little sex party at the house and destroyed, basically destroyed the house. And I called the agent. I said, look, uh, we have a problem here. Like this guy screwed the house up. And he's like, no, he didn't. So we sent him pictures and he got so embarrassed that the guy just wrote the check. He's like, whatever you want, we'll, uh, we'll fix it up for you. <laughs> Cause he was scared that we were going to go publicize what he did. But did you ever figure out who it was? I did. Don't say it. No, we keep no. that man private. No, but, if, uh, if that, if that dude stepped up and paid the bill, like that's what you should have done. Yes, sir. Yeah, and as long did. as you did that, then we are gonna keep shit nice and quiet. Yeah. That's, it's just the business that you're in. They're going to, people are going to mess up your houses, but uh, with your systems that you have set up, it will work out in your favor. You know, dude, listen, we've, I've done a few, I get nicer ones, but usually the nicer ones, you're getting nicer people. Yes. You know, you're not getting a bunch of hooligans in there for, you know, four grand a night, three grand a night. Well, that's kind of why I went that, model. but you, but you might get a party in there because, because nowadays kids aren't stupid. They could say, dude, we could all put you in 300 bucks and go get that mansion for two yeah. nights. Yeah. So we have some, we have cameras on the house. But I mean, how do you know who to rent to? It's just anybody could do it. Well, you have a profile. And so you trust in the Airbnb that they vet. But we do a call with our bigger ones. Why are you coming here? What are you Now, using has anybody for? ever contacted you off Airbnb? Yes. To just make a deal direct? Yes. So I started my GriggsVacationRentals.com. And so that kind of bypasses through Airbnb. So people, friends, I give that out to, and they share it to their friends, who whoever wants to come to Vegas. But, but there's also ways to get around Airbnb anyway. Yes. Because one time I had a house, and uh, it was Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay. And I forget, I'll just say it was 4000 a night, but I don't remember what it was. And we were going to stay there six nights. And so my buddy somehow figured out who the owner was, called the owner, and basically said, Airbnb is going to take X, X and X. Why don't you just let me rent it for X, X and X? And he called me back and he said, dude, it's only X. Right. People do that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, I just called the owner and just made the deal offline. Yeah. Like, people do that. Yeah, but how? They do that. So it's like we have repeat customers, so they're not going to go rebook it on Airbnb. They just email us and they oh, say, hey, you. can we come back? And that's legal with Airbnb? Yeah. I mean, they don't, we don't, we don't tell them. They're not like the whole, holy they're listening. Law. They're listening. It's all right. They're listening. They like hey, what me. about what about whack jobs that are putting cameras behind mirrors? Oh and, God! Are there no. those stories going on? Yeah, we don't have cameras inside the house, just in the front. But are there stories like that? Yeah, there are. Where like, dude, these motherfuckers put a two way mirror in and yeah. they're checking out sick, everything. sick mofo's. Big old mirror in the master bedroom and they're just yeah. <laughs> recording it all. Yeah, that's what another scary thing when you're in someone else's home. Like you don't know if there's a freaking camera behind that mirror yep you're sitting there rubbing one out or banging your girl <laughs> now they got you on camera rubbing one out right. what it would now what and they got i'd it. be the only dude out there that would say release it <laughs> like i don't care <laughs> what are you gonna do that's just gonna make me more famous yeah but but <laughs> at the end of the day man you write you take a sharpie or a marker and you write on a window or the the mirror if you don't see a double image of that pen, that's a two-way mirror. That's how you can tell. You okay. know that? I didn't know that. So anytime you are in an Airbnb or anybody checking is and questioning out. a two-way mirror, you draw a line down it. You should see two lines. If you don't see two lines, dude, you got a two-way mirror going on. We figured or out a one way. We figured out that more people would rather stay in the house with no cameras inside. So those the houses with no cameras inside book better and make more money. Yeah, nobody wants cameras inside. Right. Are you telling me right. there's fucking Airbnbs with cameras inside? Yeah, there are. There's a lot of them. Fuck you. Yeah. I've seen them up or like out in the, on the deck and shit. They're no, out there. they're out there. They're in the inside, outside. Pasadena. Yep. Ain't doing it. <laughs> what about cigar smoking? Outside. It's fine. In the patio Weed, area? Weed's a big problem. People smoke weed in the house. So we have systems We're, in place to fix that. Do you have deposits? Yeah. We have deposits. So ultimately, dude if someone's listening to this and they want to get involved with you financially, meaning they want to invest with you, they want to get a hold of you, just get a hold of you. Yeah. Just shoot me a DM and uh J Griggs real estate, go to Griggs university, win with airbnb.com. That's what we came up Is with. Is it Griggs university.com? Griggs university.com. And then our direct portal to learn 
strictly short-term rentals is win with airbnb.com win with airbnb.com dude i'm telling you man I need to freaking stay in touch so I can get a couple of these deals going, but I don't want to manage them. I don't want to dick with them. I, I just want the money. Yeah. You don't have to. I know, but that, that would be like, why would you let me in on it then? Because you've helped me a lot. So I'll help you. Well, again, <laughs> dude, I'm talking about like, let's go. Let's go. Like how many houses are available right now? So I think like we spoke about before we started this, that, be a little patient what about like turnberry and and uh these high rises do people like those or no no those aren't as popular you would think they would be yeah there's because well, like i would airbnb in vegas to 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 be, be in street. vegas you'd be surprised what type of people rent my houses it's more family reunions well, what are they doing here they're just hanging out getting away people go to the lake a lot of mine are in henderson they go to the lake uh, I coach, so a lot of... The reason why I started this was I was coaching at Heritage Park, and everyone was asking me, do you have an Airbnb? Because my kid's playing soccer. My kid's got a football tournament, soccer, lacrosse tournament. And I was like, now I do. And then the Fiesta closed, and that was huge for us because there's no hotels over there. Green Valley Ranch. It's, it's far. It's far, far out from where we are in Henderson. Yeah, when the Fiesta closed, what is out there? Nothing. Nothing. So we hit a really good time. Isn't there Boulder Station? But that's even or Sam's Town. Yeah, it's a, that's west up Boulder. So that's not popular. So it's just you'll all, get shot in there. It's just <laughs> it's just all Airbnbs. Yeah, yeah, we do well, and it's regulated in Henderson, so there's not an oversaturation of it. If there's somebody out there right now doing Airbnbs and they're and they're somehow not winning, is that a real? Is yeah, it, like, yeah. Like, are there people out there losing? To yeah, Airbnb? there are. For, what, what mistakes are they make? They're overspending on the remodel and furniture, and then they don't know how to operate it correctly. You got to know it's a business. You have to learn how to operate it correctly. How'd and you it, learn? I learned from a mentor of mine. He started a management company here in town, and we partnered on it. And so he manages all mine, and I bring in business, and we work together to build out the best ones in the city. So you got Vegas on lock, or is there a bigger cat? I don't, I don't know if there's a bigger cat, he's not public because he's not doing them legally. And so I kind of saw a good opportunity to exploit myself and my business that I do it the right way. A lot of people come to me to want to learn how to do it the right way. Cause if you go spend a million dollars on a house and you're doing it illegally and then they come knocking on your door, well, sometimes it's not even up to you. It's just, it's just like maybe the housing, uh, the HOA won't allow it. Right. So a lot of HOAs don't allow it. So what happens? You just don't buy that you house. Can't, you can't buy that house in that area. So is there a listing of what will tell you that Airbnb qualified homes? Here in this town, I think non-HOA areas. Matter of fact, dude, that's a business. I mean, you should start right now. I'm telling you, dude. If I could push a button right now and see all the H Airbnb qualified homes, meaning if this was your home, you could do it. Uh, so That would be a valuable list. So they have it. They have a portal. How, that. What's that called? If you type in uh, short-term rental city of Henderson. And so you can measure out the properties where they are. And there's a thousand square foot radius. So, so it's just land-based. Land-based. Geography-based. But with property addresses on it. Right. But I mean, at the end of the day, someone said, okay, you can do it within this area. Mm -hmm. So it's just area. Yep. So Henderson has it and then Clark County's coming out with it soon. So that'll be interesting to see how the city reacts to that. What's your biggest annual month so far? We just did. I mean, annual income. We just did 52,000 on my big one, uh, San Gabriel, last uh, July. That's a month. How much a One year? Month. Well, we just finished it. So I know, but like, if, I would if say someone's comparing you to making the 28 grand as a teacher to yeah. where here 12 years later? 12 years later, yeah. 12 years later, now what are you making a year? I would say last year over half a million dollars. That's pretty decent. I think so. You just, but you're just again. You own a lot of equity, and that's not even including the equity or the tax appreciation. Yeah, I became successful through buying rental properties. Would you say you're a multimillionaire? I would say that yes. On paper, yes. Do you have a million in the bank yet? I do. Do you do you use that strictly to reinvest? I do. So if somebody out there has a deal for you, hit you up. I would say hit me up to learn how to do it. That's what I really enjoy now. 
I've created a lot of friendships and partnerships through leveling up type of people like yourself and teaching them how to do the real estate and short term rentals. And it's been a total game changer. How do you think uh, it's the best way to introduce yourself to those new people? So when you bring value, obviously, to somebody, but these people, they want to see it on paper and they want to see, have you done it before? Just like when I, when I invest in a business or an opportunity, I want to see it perform. Like when, when I met you and I wanted to do the course, we had a mutual friend who he swears by your company. That's Ooh. why Dan Lear. Oh yeah. And Dan, so Dan Lear. And he was like, you got to go with Brad. He's the man. And that's the, it's the same thing with real estate. So what I do is I show what I do and I show it works. And then that makes people comfortable. Yeah. That's called credibility. Folks with credibility, you can do anything. Yeah. So what would you, what would you tell the bomb squad if you could give them anything? And again, they're not all Airbnb people, but should they be? I think the, my life changed when I invest, started investing in real estate. And so what's happening now is that there's different types of investors out there. So the market changed big time. And a lot of these flippers are kind of crap in their pants a little bit. Their business model is being affected. And mine really isn't um, because mine is a long-term hold. And so when you're buying and holding real estate for a long time, the markets will shift, but it's really not going to affect your business too much. Have you, has, has short-term rentals seen a downturn at all? We haven't in our market. Uh, I know some people are, uh, I think ours are just so unique. And when you see, when the people see my properties, they're very high level. They're really nice. They're luxury properties. And it's Vegas. And it's Vegas. People always come here. So we picked a good market to do it in. Well, dude, I'm excited you stopped by. Folks, go follow this dude at J Griggs Real Estate on IG. Jason Griggs everywhere else. GriggsUniversity.com if you guys want to learn this shit, yep. which again, I would recommend anybody that's not making decent money, they need to do something else. Yeah, you got to invest your money. And, and, and not only that, I mean like, dude, you can find creative deals. You don't need big down payments. How would you suggest somebody get started if like they, they, they want to, they just don't have a bunch of money? The best thing to do is just go on Facebook groups. And so with I, we're plugging Pace, but I, I have no problem doing that. I've gotten many deals off Pace's Facebook group. People message me all the time. Hey, you want, I just bought a deal in Gulfport, Mississippi. I'll never go there. I'll never, I'll never see the house. I'll never go touch it. But I bought an Airbnb in Gulfport, Mississippi. From Gulfport? Houston, Gulfport. You got it off Pace's group? Yeah. Paces group. See, I've had people reach out to me because of the Pace podcast, and I just flip them to Pace because I don't really want to dick with it, nor do I, you know, want to take the steps that are necessary yeah. to do it right. So, like, what if I just flip you some deals like Let's that? Let's go. I'd love then to we do partner that. on them. I think we could definitely do that. So, folks, hit me up or hit him up, especially if you got deals. We got dough. <laughs> And, and you could make dough. You could make a lot of money. And that's how you buy you way, by the way, that's where I was going, where if you don't have any money, you find people with money, which is what you said earlier, yep. you know, and then you, you, you ultimately do the legwork. Cause if someone brought me 10 good deals and, and I mean, they're like no brainer deals. Someone did the math and it's like, yeah, they're legit. How much would that, would you pay someone for that? I, I paid seven grand for the house for the creative deal. Yeah. See now, boom, now right. you got seven G's in your pocket, seven fool. G's and it brings me in 1500 a month profit. Folks, pull your head out. If you ain't making it, <laughs> this is a way to do it. Until next time, keep that shit real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.